Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi coming to you from China. Welcome to another weekly Lightroom edit. In this week's edit, we're going to do this image, which was shot in Canton, out near the ocean, actually, in a little tiny town, uh, basically outside of Tanzhou. So what we're going to do here is, uh, well, let's first go over actually our camera settings. This was shot on a 5D Mark II uh, on a 7200 millimeter lens, and I shot this at full raw. You know, a lot of times when I'm on vacation, when I'm kind of wanting to shoot journalistically, what I'll do is I'll shoot full raw because I know that if I'm on my 7200 and I really need to get in tight on something, I'm not going to be able to get close enough to that object. When I feel like I might be in this situation, I switch the camera to full raw. That way I have extra megapixels that I can kind of crop down on and make sure that I have enough detail still for printing. This works great when you're, you know, people watching because you can kind of stand far back with your 7200, get really cool shots of, of people's faces and then crop in so they're really tight and you don't have to kind of go through the whole, you know, awkwardness of asking them or just taking their photo and then looking at you funny and giving the stink eye and everything like that. So that's a little tip for you guys. Now let's go over the settings. It was shot at 1 500th of a second. I shot this at f11 and at ISO 100. So it's actually still really bright outside, but I'm shooting it to be pretty dark because I want to see all this detail in the water and I want to be able to see that kind of highlight edge uh, where the sun is just kind of reflecting down the water uh, and make it kind of really just a nice warm silhouette shot. Now, this shot would have been much cooler if I could have waited 15 more minutes and shot with the sun right here behind the forest, but I was just passing by and uh, didn't have time to stop. So. So we shot this, zoomed out at 70, uh, at 200 millimeters to get some nice compression and to get close. So uh, let's start with the production. So I'm going to hit I again to remove that. Now we have two options when it comes to this image. Um, we can go with like a really nice kind of moonlight type shot where it has a lot of blue tones, or we can go with a sunset type of silhouette. Actually, there's a lot more options than just that, but that's kind of the two things that I have in mind when I envision the shot. So give you an example, if we pull down the temperature, you'll notice that once we get down the low, this is going to almost start looking like basically moonlight, like we're at nighttime, and this is shining down the, on the lake. When we get on the warm side, then it looks like a sunset. All right, so let's get started, and let's say for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go with a kind of warm, nice sunset look to it. We're going to skip the blue, but you guys, if you guys want to do the blue, this same thing would work very well just by dropping the temperature. What we're going to do is going to raise the temperature up a little bit. So let's go up to plus 5,000. And then now let's kind of, I want to fix the crop because it's just kind of bugging me a little bit. So I'm going to hit R. We're going to get into our crop overlay, and I'm just going to kind of balance this out a little bit so the horizon line looks straight. Uh, just a little bit more, and then we're going to pull it in. And I want him to be on that one-third line right there. And if you guys want to use different compositional rules, that's totally fine too. Right now I have it set to this overlay. This is kind of my standard overlay. It just kind of divides each, each piece of it into uh, nine squares. So you have thirds along each side horizontally and vertically. But if you hit O again, you can switch it to, this is the golden rule, the rule of thirds. Um, you can switch it to diagonals. You can switch it to another version of diagonals, triangles. And then also you have your spiral, which is similar to kind of like a, a negative space kind of rule of thirds composition, just a little bit more extreme. But we'll go with the standard, and I'll just put them on that one-third line right there, and that's fine. I don't know if I told you guys, by the way, these guys are actually fishermen. Uh, if you look, zoom in on the boat, you can see their nets and stuff. There's actually a restaurant, like these restaurants off to the side. They're like really, really tiny restaurants. And basically, these fishermen just go out and catch fish and then sell directly to these restaurants right there. And then you go to these restaurants. They're, they're kind of like open-air uh, kind of restaurants, so you kind of find an Italy type stuff. But they're in China. All right, so let's get on to the production. Let's increase our blacks. I'm going to go up to about plus 15. I want to have some nice, deep, rich blacks in this. Um, we're not going to use any fill light because if we do, it's just going to kill that black. So let's leave it there, and then let's go down to contrast. I'm going to boost up my contrast. We can try and tweak the recovery on this. Again, because it's it really is just uh, all about the highlights in a silhouette shot, Tweaking the recovery is only going to kill contrast and it not, isn't necessarily going to help that much. But if we do add like maybe 20 to the recovery, it might help just a tiny bit. So we'll leave it right there. Um, next, let's go to our clarity. Let's pull up clarity to about plus 40. If I take it up too high, this little uh, this highlight and this far, or fisherman back here is going to become uh, too kind of dark. They, they get that fringing effect and we don't want that. So let's go up to uh, plus 40. I'm also going to take up my vibrance a little bit, and we're going to pull down saturation a tiny bit, just to kind of leave those tones a little bit more natural. Okay, 
So we're good with our basic adjustments here. If I want, I can make a few tone curve adjustments. I might just do a little bit of a contrast. Just kind of take my uh, blacks down a tiny bit more, take my contrast or my highlights up a tiny bit more here, and just add a little bit more of my mid-tones into this. And that looks really nice right there. Okay, so now one thing I want to do is just kind of balance out the exposure a little bit. Um, the, the image fades off a little bit too quickly to become too dark on this right side right here and I want to kind of balance out that tone. It can fade a little bit but I don't want it to fade that much and this is just how the light was falling in the scene. It just naturally came out that way but it kind of makes the uh, farmer right here, the, the fisherman right here, kind of blend into this shadowy area of the background a little bit too much. So I'm going to hit M to pull up my uh, graduated filters. We're going to hold Alt if you haven't already reset it and just hit Reset so it resets it. And what we're going to do is hold Shift and then pull this exposure brush across right to about where the median touches the front of the boat. And then what we're going to do is adjust the exposure up. Okay. And we're going to get to a point where it just kind of looks nice and natural. I think that's about right there. So going up 0.68. If we go up too high, this is going to look, it's going to look obviously like you have drop an exposure brush over the right side. So at 0.68 it's about right. Alright, so let's click new now and let's do a new exposure brush. Again, I want this to kind of have a nice dramatic feel and so what we're going to do is kind of darken up the bottom just a little bit of the image. So let's take uh, this exposure brush. We can make these adjustments first or apply the, the gradient graduate filter and then make the adjustments afterwards. Sometimes I like to apply it first just because I don't know exactly how much of each effect I want. So I'm going to drag this up again holding shift from the bottom and we're going to go up till about the top line touches the fisherman. I'm going to let go and now I'm just going to pull down that exposure a little bit. And really I just want this nice subtle darkening effect. It doesn't have to be very powerful. Um, in fact, if it's too much, you're going to see like the, the highlight's going to start looking strange right here. It's going to look kind of out of place. So at about negative 0.98, negative 1 is about good. And what I might do even is just grab this middle, uh, middle point on my graduate filter and just pull up more so it kind of brings that effect further into the image. And that looks great right there. I'm going to brighten overall just because I've darkened so many areas of this image. I'm going to now brighten some of it. So let's brighten it a little bit up to about 65, 70. looks about right. All right, now let's go down and let's kind of tweak some of our uh, vignettes and everything like that so the graduation from edge to edge looks correct. So what I'm going to do is, again, we're going to start with a reverse vignette, and then I'm going to pull the midpoint in, and then we're just going to move from there until we have a nice even graduation. And it looks like plus 10 gives us a pretty nice graduation. And that looks great right there. Let's, uh, while we're down here, let's zoom in and let's uh, get our sharpening settings right. I'm going to take this up a bit. Let's go up to about, let's start with our default and see where we're at. So default for me is 70, 1.5, and 30. And that actually looks really good right there. So I'm going to leave it right there. And now what we're going to do is just do a little bit of cleaning up. We're pretty much done with the image, uh, but we can do a few things just to kind of tweak and make it a little bit better. So I'm going to close some of these so that they're not so distracting. Let's just tab them all. All right. Oh, I accidentally hit black and white. Nope, we want back in color. OK, there we go. All right, so let's go to our spot removal tool. You guys can get there by hitting Q, uh, and we're going to heal out some stuff. So starting with this little bubble right here, it's, it's actually like a, something that's got floating in the water. I don't know what it is, uh, whether it's an animal or if it's uh, just one of their tools or something like that that they're using, but it looks distracting. And so let's heal it out, just so because when you look back from right here, it looks almost like a dust speck or it looks like something kind of strange. So let's just pop that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick a similar area of water right next to it so that the uh, those kind of lines and the waves look identical. That looks close enough. We're going to go over here, do another one right here. Our, our final test of this to see if they look natural is going to be when we zoom out to see if you can actually see them. And I'm going to do the same thing right back here. Let's see if there's any others. I don't see any other super distracting. Oh, there's a couple over here. These are actually birds, I think. If there was a bunch of them, it would look really cool. But since there's only uh, that one, it just kind of looks a little bit distracting and out of place. 
So just kind of fixing it up. Let's uh, click on Q again to remove that and let's see if it's noticeable. Okay, now this one right here still looks a little bit strange. So let's zoom in on that and we're going to touch that one up a bit. I'm going to switch to Q. In some situations, what might look better is just switching it to the clone stamp tool. And then we're going to shrink this up just a tiny bit so it doesn't look so large. Let's click on that. That looks a lot better. Um, if you wanted to get it any better than that, we'll probably need to take this into Photoshop at that point because uh, it's really hard to really match up these lines. Or you spend a lot of time just trying to sit here and match up those lines. I'll see one over here. Let's uh, let's see if we can just make our lives easy and just crop that one out a tiny bit. I'm just going to pull up my crop a tiny bit. There we go. Got lucky with that one. All right, so now let's clean up our sky. I see a lot of dust on my lens. Uh, whenever we're shooting at high apertures like that, you're going to notice this kind of stuff. So let's zoom in. We're going to click right here. I'm going to switch back. We're going to go back to the healing tool. And again, we're you know getting in a, a really close approximated, like a, a really close area to the one that we're trying to heal out because we want that graduation in the sky to be even. It looks great right there. So let's zoom in over here. I know it's a little bit of stuff right here, but I'm not going to. Well, we can actually heal it out. Let's try it. Let's heal out right here. And let's replace it with this side. And then we're going to shrink it down so that that line kind of matches up. There we go. There we go. That's better. All right. Now let's go over to this side. Let's heal out this one. I don't know why it sometimes it just jumps that tool off to the side. I wish it would just kind of jump it right to the right. Same thing right here. Same thing here. And here. There's a little one here. This lens is not really that dusty, but at f11 you're going to see everything. Probably a few of these are on the sensor too. So. All right, just panning across the sky. This one is going to be a tough one. We could try to heal that out, um, but because there's so many lines, it's going to be really tricky. Now, what I would recommend is shrinking this down, clicking there, and then dragging it to an area where there's two lines that are at a similar angle. This is if we want to do this in Lightroom. Um, so that looks like it's not quite right there. Boy, this one's going to be a tricky one. Let's see if we can get it to work on this side. Now, this is one of those situations where if you want to fix that one that's in, in kind of like all that detail, we really need to take that into Photoshop. It's going to be too tough to try and get it out in Lightroom. So let's skip that one. Let's go on to this one. Luckily, that one's not that distracting, so it's not like a huge one. All right, so let's click Q so we can remove those spot removal tool marks and see our final image. Here is the before, and here is our after image. All right, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed. We'll see you with the next episode.